WASD never really felt natural to me, but after I started playing this game, it sort of just became natural. I would never use WASD. I would always use the arrow keys. Feels a bit like Resident Evil style tank controls. Only I can control the camera and it doesn't completely suck. So yeah, we're going through these enemy lines like crap through a goose, pretty much. Oh yeah. You don't stand a chance. Pie. It's green. Oh, this is Star Trek. Damn tar handler. The area is secure and the medical team from the Tapau is beaming down now, Captain. Captain Salar may be able to answer a few questions for you if you wish. We can return to the Waglinde as soon as you are ready. Captain, we are receiving another alert from Starfleet Command. Starfleet has lost contact with the USS Eagle. When we've completed our work here, we are to proceed to the Trimble system and find the Eagle and render any aid necessary. Not quite yet. First, I want this. I don't know why. I just do. It calls to me. The sample, th this this anomaly speaks to me in a very personal way. So let's go ahead and talk to this guy and get the dialogue from him. Talk to Captain Salar. Raven, get out of Captain Salar. Here, you can stand there. There you go. Oi. Stand there and stay put. Dr. Captain Salar. Peace and long life to you, Vice Admiral. What is Turkanian Syndrome? A rare virus that attacks the blood cells of some humanoids. The disease was first diagnosed 47.6 years ago in Taken 3. Victims of Turkanian Syndrome slowly stop producing red blood cells. If left untreated, the disease is always fatal. Well, yeah, if they stop producing red blood cells, I figure that's what would happen. What is the treatment for Turkanian Syndrome? We will administer a series of injections to the patients over the course of the next three weeks. The treatment can be uncomfortable, but if given in time, the recovery rate is 100%. Who developed the treatment for Tacanian Syndrome? A team at Starfleet Medical used the Fabrini cure for xenopolycythemia discovered by Ambassador Spock and Admiral Leonard McCoy in 2268 as the basis for a treatment. Xenopolycythemia and Tacanian Syndrome are similar in nature. The Vulcan Science Academy is attempting to determine if the two diseases are linked in some way. Do you know why the Klingons would have wanted to stop you? I cannot speak to their motivations. The medicines we have on board the Tapau have a wide variety of uses. We even carry equipment for genetic engineering, but it is only used to correct existing conditions as permitted by Federation law. There's the connection. Th this will become relevant later on. All right, that's all for now. Depart system. Let's go help the eagle. 
Namo's going to stay behind for a moment to guard the place, but don't worry, he's beaming up too. I'm not going to leave Namo behind. So go to Trimble. A uh, Vesper. And he's using the Excalibur? Yeah, it looks like... Either the Excalibur... Aw, oh, it faded away. Either the Excalibur or the, um... Constitution. The Vesper Pylons look effed up. They they look weird. I never really liked those. I would always use the Excalibur Pylons because they look they they match the design of the Vesper far far better. I don't know I don't know what why the Vesper has pylons like that that curve forward. It, they they don't look that great. They don't go with they don't match the flow of the ship at all. Trimble system. A ringed Class M world, Trimble shares many properties with Vulcan, including its vast deserts. A thick layer of clouds keeps an average surface temperature about 15 degrees cooler than temperatures in Vulcan's forge, however, and snow in the mountains is common. Continue clipped wing. I think I may remember this from somewhere. I remember getting my backside handed to me here. I think this is the end, though. I think this is the this is the final scuffle of this mission. I think I think the part I'm thinking about is in a later mission. Subspace anomalies in this area have decreased our sensor range, sir. We will need to move deeper into the system and search for the USS Eagle. I'm guessing it's next to the Klingon battle cruisers. Wow, you survived. I'm amazed. And that was with almost no power to weapons. Yeah, I know they're 41 levels below me, but still, they pop. And this is... Is, this, is that an Olympic... I don't really I don't really like the redesign of the Olympic in this game. I much prefer the I much prefer the version that was in Star Trek First Contact. I would really love if they if they restored that version of the ship, because that version Looks like it might be an Olympic, yeah. But um the version in uh, uh, did I say first contact, I meant all good things. Yeah. All good things. The final episode of TNG introduced a, a hospital class of ship called the Olympic, or Hope. It was kind of fuzzy what the exact name was. Um, and uh, the ship in question was named the USS Pasteur. And it was a cool looking ship. It was pretty cool looking. And uh, No, that's not an Olympic. That's, that's one of the other ones. It was pretty cool looking. And uh, it was on screen for God, not even 20, not even like, the, there wasn't even, like, 20 minutes of the episode that it was set on it before it, it got blown up. But it, it, it made it, definitely made an impression when it showed up. And, uh, the version in Star Trek Online looks almost nothing like the version that was introduced in All Good Things. And I really wish they'd bring back that other version. Really wish they would. You know, it just, it... It looks more post TNG in all good things. Let me let me just say that it looks more like something that would that you would see that you know y you could say yeah this exists after like the timeline of Next Generation. And it's it's also got like this clear lineage with the Daedalus classes and and such that came before. Let me go ahead and continue. Incoming message from the USS Eagle, sir. Putting it on screen now. Yeah, yeah, this is the end. This is Captain Christopher Ayers of the Federation Starship Eagle. Our shields are down and we have been boarded by Klingons. Repeat, we have been boarded. My crew is fighting them in the corridors, but we won't last long. The away team... The away team ready for transport, sir. Saka, Shaka when the walls fell. <laughs> the away team is... Grammar! The away team is ready for transport, sir. We can beam down at your command. The away team ready for transport. Grammatical errors. Huzzah! Hello? 
loading. So this is the very end. There's going to be a ground scuffle with uh, a Klingon mid-boss, basically. And uh, that's going to be it. Well, this guy is a proper boss when you first fight him. I have scanned the ship, Captain, and I'm not reading any Federation life signs in this area. Several members of the Eagle's bridge crew have retreated to Shuttle Bay 1. I recommend we secure the area between here and the Shuttle Bay. Well, Hazard Team, you know what to do. Run in front of the guy with the shotgun. Your cunning plan has failed you. Wait, cunning? No, that was stupid. You're dead. This room has been pacified. Another great mission to play, although, frankly... If you're going for the uh, Klingon kill accolade, you're pretty much going to have it before this arc is over. Chugging a little bit, Jesus. Synthail! Booze! Give me booze! Damn it. You got knocked the fuck out. So here is the Klingon mid boss I was talking about. And, as you can see, he can still inflict a bit of damage on me. Even now... He doesn't drop any items. You tight bastard. I'm apparently stuck in my combat pose. Stop. There we go. And this is Captain Ayers, who looks like some alternate universe version of myself for some reason. Or perhaps I look like an alternate universe version of him. I don't know why. But it's kind of uncanny. I don't have the goatee, though, so I know I'm the good one. Who is Ayers? Why is he here? Why does he look like me? Begin writing the fan fiction. Or don't. Actually, don't. I prefer you didn't. Talk to Captain Ayers. It's lucky you were here to help. Let me let me go ahead and... Yeah, that's just creepy. What happened here, Captain? I knew that the Klingons were causing trouble in this area, but I never thought they would attack a medical ship. We dropped out of warp to respond to a distress signal. It was a trap. There were Klingon ships waiting for us. They knocked out our weapons and shields, and then they started beaming boarding parties over. I lost my chief of security and first officer in the fighting, Vice Admiral. Some of the finest officers I have ever had the privilege of serving with were cut down in a senseless ambush. What did the Klingons want? We have genetic resequencers on board, along with a supply of biomimetic gel. In the wrong hands, they could be used for gene engineering or even to create a space-borne virus. My orders were to get these materials to the Corvat system safely. No matter what, I had to keep them out of Klingon hands. Where were you when we entered the shuttle bay? The shuttle bay doors were sealed, but my chief engineer thought we could reroute power to them without harming the rest of the ship. We sealed ourselves in the shuttle with the genetic resequencers. If you hadn't arrived when you did, they were going to blast out and take the cargo someplace safe. I... I know it's a captain's duty to go down with the ship. But what was more important? Dying with honor, or keeping a devastating weapon out of the hands of the Klingons? Do you need additional assistance? We can handle the cleanup here, Vice Admiral. 
I'm sure Starfleet will want to get your report about what happened. Exit. Dun, 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 dun. And that is it. Task Force Hippocrates. So, really, it's not... It doesn't really play a very large role in the story arc, having gone through all the text. Really, all it's about... Hey, Namo. Really, all of this is about is just sort of foreshadowing what comes... What's going to be coming very soon. And, uh... Revan's cape is flapping in non-existent wind, it seems. Maybe it's just because he's just that badass. I don't know. He's like Proto-Man. He can produce his own win because of how badass he is. But that's neither here nor there. Namo is clipping through my head. Stop that, Namo. Uh, let's go ahead and get back to the ship. Captain, we can return to the Waglinde whenever you are ready. Beam to ship. Namo's going to stay behind for a brief moment, because that's how awesome he is. Namo's the last to come back. Alright, let's go ahead and hail that Undine bastard. Or Admiral Quinn, whatever you prefer to call him. Hail Starfleet. No, I don't want to drop the assignment. Task Force Hippocrates. Good work, Vice Admiral. I'm looking forward to reviewing your report. Don't try to jump for joy, you imposter. So, on the augmentation armor, how much shit did I pick up? A lot! Yeah! So, there we go. Task Force Hippocrates. The next mission is Secret Orders. And that's going to... I believe that's when the plot thickens. Trimble looks like Ozma for some reason. Doesn't that look like Ozma from Final Fantasy IX? This thing right here? He looks like Ozma. This gives me pause. I have bad memories of Ozma. I have nightmares about Ozma. Looks like a frickin' skull. Looks like a... Like a the top half of a skull in this corner too. Look at the bones. I'm sorry. I was talking about something else. I was talking about secret orders. Yes. <laughs> Damn it, alchemist! Get your ADD under control. So, secret orders is going to start to see the Klingon arc culminate. Like the like the lots of the little things we've been building towards are going to start uh, reaching a climax in secret orders. Basically, from this point forward, all the little, all the little foreshadowing that's been happening during the Klingon arc uh, is going to start happening. Basically, like all, all the things that have been foreshadowed are going to start occurring one after the other. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna. I will see you guys then for uh, Secret Orders next week. Next week, I might be doing some Armored Core. Uh, it may be Armored Core next week. It might be it might be Armored Core. Uh, I might try to get at least at least one at least one uh, Star Trek Online mission because, like I said, I really want to put my foot on the gas and I really want to uh, I really want to get through the Klingon arcs, through the Romulan arcs, and uh, get to the really cool shit. Uh, and uh, we're gonna see some cool stuff right off right off the bat once we get to the very end of the Klingon arc and uh, all throughout the Breen featured episodes. So, um, except for Cold Comfort. Cold Comfort has to be sort of my least favorite. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that was Task Force Hippocrates. And this has been Star Trek Online Rise of the Red Shirt. I'll see you guys later, so later.